Okay, looks like we're ready to get started here. Uh, I'm getting messages back that you're hearing the sound good. Just type in your message if there's any additional problems. We'll see if we can get those fixed. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get started. All right, welcome everybody to the Denali Payroll Webinar Series for today, March 12, 2014. Uh, we're going to be doing this series uh, every Wednesday for the next eight weeks. Um, they're going to be about a half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour each um, with uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes that we're going to be presenting the information and then the last 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A time to answer questions that you may have. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, and if you have any uh, comments or questions you want to put in the chat, you can go ahead and do that. But uh, we're going to save the answers, the questions and answer session to the end. So after we're done with the presentation, we'll go ahead and answer any questions that you have as we go along. Uh, so today we're just going to cover a couple of things about the payroll session just to kind of introduce you to it and get it going. Uh, and we'll get as many questions regarding what we talked about today as we can in, in the Q&A session at the end. Okay, everybody, that's me. I'm Jeremy Beislein. I am the new trainer here at the Cougar Mountain, so I'll be presenting the uh, webinar here today. Uh, I'll be hosting the webinars over the next few weeks uh, for to get you introduced into the payroll, the Denali payroll that we've got going. It's going to be released here coming up soon. Okay, so today's topics. Uh, for today, we're just going to get the introductions to the Denali payroll, kind of show you the screen, the layout a little bit. And then we're going to get into uh, the user rights, uh, basically for setting up security, where you can go ahead and uh, assign specific duties to your employees that are going to be using the payroll module to keep your internal controls for your company there, and also to secure your information. Okay. Um, so for today's webinar, we're going to discuss the basically the uh, kind of give you an outline of the payroll screen layout, give you the feel of it. Then we're going to go into the security settings for the payroll user rights so that you can keep the internal controls at hand and you can assign certain rights to your payroll employees that run the payroll module. And we'll get into the payroll module preferences uh, that basically explains how you'll set up your payroll module that you'll be using for your particular organization. All right. So we will go ahead and first of all, we're going to get started. I'm going to go over the security first because that's actually in the controller module. So I will go ahead. Okay, so in your controller module, you're going to set up your user rights just like you would on any other module in Cougar Mountain. Go ahead and bring that up here. So I'm going to select Bill because that's who we have set up in our demo company here. And then you can go ahead and edit Bill's user information here. And just like you've seen on your other Denali payroll modules, you can set rights specifically for Bill uh, for payroll here. You would set the rights for Bill of what you want Bill to do. If you want to give him all access to payroll to to all the functions of the payroll module, you would go ahead and just select the checkbox there. And then if you want after that, you can come in here and uncheck what you don't want him to do. For example, if you don't want Bill to post the payroll, this is a good option if Bill's supervisor wants to review the transactions before the payroll is posted. Then Bill's supervisor can come in and post after everything looks good. Or you can set a uh, specific payroll function that Bill does. He processes payroll enters the transaction, but you don't want Bill to be able to print the checks, you can uncheck that option there. So it's pretty straightforward, just like with the other modules, you just set the user rights for your employee that's going to be running the payroll module or employee. And you can set specific rights for the different employees there. So with that, we are going to take a look at the payroll module itself now. This is the just a screenshot of the uh, first screen you'll see the navigation screen so we will switch over to that to let you look at it for real and there it is uh, similar to your other modules you've got a nice layout here that helps you process your payroll transactions run your edit reports print your checks print the register anyone who had uh, the Cougar Mountain professional payroll this is 
pretty much in the same layout as it was on professional on the list when you would process higher level. So it works out really well that way to keep, keep you familiarized with how it works. Uh, so for today's webinar, we're going to talk about the module preferences. That's basically your first step in setting up a row module is to go into the module preferences. And the first thing we see is similar to professional, you have uh, your current payroll year ending. Uh, the payroll year always ends on December 31st. That might not match your fiscal calendar, that's fine. That is required for the uh, federal regulations to keep your payroll on a calendar year. A uh, couple of differences between professional and Denali here is we've got two options now. One option for check format, another option for direct deposit sub format. So you can have two separate formats, one for if you're printing out payroll checks, and for employees who have direct deposit, you have a separate format you can set up for them that it prints out for you. Uh, last check printed, last direct deposit number printed is a read-only field. That field is automatically filled in and assigned by the Cougar Mountain system. Maximum garnishment percentage, uh, similar to professional, you can enter that in as a default, but you can also change that per employee if you have to set up a garnishment on one of your employees. Uh, other options here, we have the make notes visible option. When you bring up an employee maintenance screen, if this is checked, it jumps directly to their notes tab. If this is unchecked, it'll just go to their main setup screen. Enable multi-batch mode is another great option in payroll. Uh, just like the other modules, if you need to be able to enter an adjustment without messing up a current batch, this multi-batch mode is great. You can open a new batch to enter the adjustment, post it through, and then you can continue on working on the current batch without interfering with that, with any adjustments you're making. Okay, and one thing you'll notice here, anyone who uses professional payroll is, in Denali, we now have an option here to encrypt the social security number on checks and reports. In professional, we didn't print the social security number on the check stub by default. In Denali, that option is now available where it prints their social security number or if you want it to block it out so it doesn't print the number itself, you would select this checkbox and then you can select which encryption format you want to use. If you use the last four digits here, it will put the X's for the first five digits and then just show the last four digits. If you want to show the first three digits and X out the remaining digits, you would select this option to show first three digits. Or if you don't want it to show the social security number at all, you can select that option as well on the check stub and reports. And with module preferences, your next tab is your integration. Uh, this is where you'd set your payroll integration with your other modules. Accounts payable, of course, is used up for your tax withholdings and employer tax payable obligations along with other deductions or benefits that you would uh, have set up as a payable in accounts payable that you would pay out. Uh, that by turning the integration on, payroll will automatically post those liabilities to accounts payable for you when you run the payroll. Bank reconciliation, uh, similar to professional, you can have that turned on for direct deposit summary or details. Uh, for your direct deposit transactions, it'll post a single transaction to bank rec for the full batch, or if you do detail, it'll post the entire, it'll post each individual check as a separate transaction in bank reconciliation. And of course, general ledger, similar, same, same uh, options there. Detailed, each payroll check is a separate posting. Condensed, it will do uh, your income and expenses, but it does the balance sheet accounts as one summary. Summary, it does everything as one posting to payroll instead of each transaction. So detail is recommended on that one, that's up to you. If you do the bank reconciliation, you have to put in a bank code for your payroll banking. Um, if you uh, have the bank reconciliation turned off on your integration, then the bank rec field will disappear and it will just ask you to put in a general ledger account for your bank account. for your general ledger integration instead. When you put the bank rec code in account, it automatically pre-fills in the general ledger cash account that's associated with that bank account. So for example, we'll use our Chase Corp payroll account and it puts in the bank code. Normally the cash account would fill in automatically on this. I believe we have 
uh, with this particular demonstration, we haven't set up our cash account yet in the bank rec module for this bank account code. So that's what's happening there. But that will automatically fill in for you. Uh, general ledger wages payable account, that is a required field if you have the general ledger integration turned on. This is going to be your wages payable liability account that the payroll processes through when you are processing payroll each time. So you would select the wages payable account, whichever one's applicable in here. And these fields are required if you have the integration turned on. Now, one thing that we have different in the Cougar Mountain Denali payroll is we have the direct deposit fields as part of your module preferences now. So that kind of simplifies things for you. You can enter all of your direct deposit information here under module preferences. This is the company information you would put in for direct deposits as required by your bank when sending direct deposits. Um, the Cougar Mountain Denali only supports the NACHA file format. That's what everybody's going to now. And uh, one of the neat features about Denali is you now have an option here. You can select where you want the NACHA file to be saved when you process direct deposit. And you can browse to where you want that. The desktop is a great option. That way you can grab that file and upload it to your bank as needed when you get through posting your direct deposits through in payroll. And then, of course, your print options are similar to other modules. One of the new features of Denali Payroll is since we have two different options for checks and direct deposit stubs, you now have two different print options for those as well. If you want to send direct deposit stubs to a separate printer or a separate output file as opposed to checks, that is an option there as well. Okay, so that's pretty much an introduction of uh, the Cougar Mountain Denali Payroll. Uh, it's uh, an introduction, just some quick outline steps on how to set up your module preferences, and in the controller module, how to set up your user rights for security purposes and, and for internal controls as well. Okay, so now we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, you can go ahead and put your questions in the chat box there. I see one of them has already popped up. What about user-defined fields? Yes, that is a very good question. Uh, the user-defined fields are coming. Uh, we now got payroll just about ready to release, but we don't have the user-defined field set up quite yet for the payroll. Um, one thing to keep in mind, a lot of the user-defined fields that were being used in professional that a lot of our clients have set up, a lot of those fields are now standard in Denali payroll, such as emergency contact information, things like that. You're going to see that in the Denali payroll already built in. So, But the user-defined fields will be uh, put out in the second release of our payroll module. So that option will be available. Okay, so there's a question on here about converting from Pro. Yes, your payroll data will convert from Pro to Denali just fine. That's gonna, there's going to be an option in the controller to do the conversion from Pro to Denali, um, which that'll be available in the first release. However, the user-defined fields, they will convert okay, but they just won't show up until the second release is updated on your system when the user defined field option is there. So convert from pro, just fine. Okay, there was a question that popped in here about how much testing have we done on, on this payroll module. Uh, we have done extensive testing. We've been doing in-house testing thoroughly. Uh, we've also got several beta testers that are testing the product right now. Um, and we also have several other um, automated programs that are just running automated simulations through the system to make sure that the Denali payroll will work seamlessly with the rest of your system. So it is uh, being thoroughly tested as we speak now. It has been for several months now, actually. All right, another quick question that popped in here uh, is regarding fund accounting. Uh, we had a question somebody wanted to know about uh, setting up multiple bank accounts for multiple funds. Uh, right now, the answer to that is uh, no, it's going to be the same as it was in the uh, professional module. Um, it will just be the single bank account set up for each of the funds like it is now. Okay, the next question we're looking at is, um, uh, will there be any manual setup of payroll preferences when converting from pro? Um, in the conversion, Denali payroll will take your pro settings that you have set up in your professional payroll and convert them over to the Denali payroll for you. So you shouldn't have to have any problem with going in and manually setting anything up. It'll just 
automatically take your settings you have set up in professional and move them over to Denali for you. Okay, another question here. If we are using the payroll on another machine, will we be able to direct to where the files are for the conversion? Uh, the way that works is, is when you convert from Pro to Denali, it's like your any other conversion you did with the main accounting. Um, the machine that's running payroll will need to have access to the machine that has the Pro files on it. For example, if you have a server with your Pro files on the server and you have another workstation running Denali payroll, that workstation will need to just make sure that you have access to the server to access those files, and then you can convert it just fine through there. Now, Denali uses the SQL Server, which it will be using that for payroll as well. So it'll be set up to work with all of your workstations that are all logged into a, the central SQL Server that you're using for Denali. And the payroll will work with SQL as well, just like the other modules do. Um, another conversion question here, and that is a good question, Jody. Uh, direct deposit info for employees, will that carry over to Denali? Yes, that will carry over just fine. There shouldn't be any problem. It will be part of the conversion process. So you shouldn't have to re-enter the direct deposit information. Uh, good question there, Georgia. Testing with Atrix. Yes, we have done extensive testing with Atrix with the payroll module and for Denali, and it is fully set up to work with Atrix at this point. You can actually use any PDF virtual printer and save those payroll stubs as a PDF file that way. So you don't have to use PDF Blaster. It's an option if you do have it installed, but you can use any PDF virtual printer for that option. Or you can just print those to your printer uh, to have them on paper. Okay. Okay, uh, one final question I have on here. Um, looks like, uh, just to be clear, Pro is on another machine. How will Denali Payroll pull files from the CMS machine running payroll? Basically, if you have the Cougar Mountain machine running payroll, if you have those files set up separately on that machine, in order to get those into Denali, then you would just need to make sure that the machine you're using to convert from Pro to Denali has access to the machine that has the Pro payroll files on there and that they're networked together so you can pull those through. That's all you have to do is make sure that your machine that is running Pro right now is networked with your other machine that you're going to be installing Denali on where you're going to be doing that conversion on. And that's all you'll need to do on that. So. OK, we've got time for one more question here. Um, got a question in here from Chuck. Does Denali have Atrix installer, or is it a separate install? Yeah, that'll be similar to uh, the Pro, the way Atrix works with Pro. It's going to work similar with Denali as well. That will be a separate install that has to be installed and set up. Once that's set up, then Denali Payroll will be able to access those Atrix Payroll forms and process those for you. Okay, so moving on here. So here's what we've got scheduled for our webinars coming up over the next seven weeks from this week. Uh, on uh, next Wednesday, we're going to go into part two for getting ready for Denali Payroll. Uh, basically, we're just going to discuss um, the leave codes, tax codes, department codes, things like that. We're going to be going over that. Uh, week three, we're going to be discussing uh, streamlining your employee management, basically setting up your employees for week three and week four. That's going to be a two-part session because there's quite a bit of information we'll need to cover on that to set up employees in your new Denali payroll module. Uh, week five, um, entering the payroll. Enhanced payroll process. We'll go over how you would basically do a payroll run in Denali, which uh, I'm kind of excited myself about that because the new Denali has a really neat system set up for doing that. Uh, week six, um, the pre-posting reports. We're going to cover that on week six. Um, how do you know it's done right? Your edit reports, your benefits deduction reports, all of the reports that you would run before posting your payroll run. And then we'll wrap it up in week seven and eight with your payroll history reports, your tax reports, all the other reports that Denali has available for you in the Denali payroll module. Uh, we're also going to try to get into a little more in-depth discussion in the coming weeks about the conversion process, because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are using professional payroll right now. So that's going to be very important. And we'll try to cover that as much as we can for you as well during this uh, webinar process.
also, just so you're aware, um, all of these webinars that we're doing every week are recorded, and we're going to post them up on, the, on our website, so you will have access to watch these webinars again if you have any other information, or if you missed anything that we covered here and you want to review that again. Um, any other information that you have questions about, put the call here, uh, or send your emails in for any questions or comments. And again, just remember, this is the first of eight webinars. We've got a lot more to cover in the coming weeks. All right. So with that, keep an eye out for follow-up communications, and then access the recorded webinar presentation will be posted on our website coming up. All right. Thank you so much for attending today, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from you next week at this same time, Wednesday at noon. Have a great day, everybody.